All right, so we're going over vortex today, or vortexes today, and just showing how this world is a vortex, and how there are sacred sites all scattered all over the world, in which there are all are many vortexes within this vortex of spiraling energy. So a vortex is a composition of opposite flowing energy. When aligned, the spirals can co-create spheres of energy. Oh, also, we're reading from the schematic of time in ancient sites, uh, the or the Tide Creek Vortex site. All right, so a vortex is a composition of opposite flowing energy. When aligned, the spirals can co-create spheres of energy. These spheres will have their own vibrational frequency in alignment with associated realities. At these thin walled power spots, these realities can be observed and bridged by those who have the ability to do so. On consciousness levels, people that are not looking for this effect will not see it, but the camera has no conscious awareness, so the effect is recorded in there talking about a picture that's actually on the website. It's far more complicated than that, but the function, uh, that's not the function of this page, which they go on to describe Just how this works, you know, or just how this vortex works. So the realms of dimensional or uh, multidimensional aspects are not subject to time or space. This allows a structure to be divided into individual parts, but it also permits one another to occupy the same space and time. It is also conducive for interactions to be created instantly. The only thing that has ever created the illusion of separation is our own consciousness. The conscious part allows us as individuals to speed up or decrease what we create. Since our conscious mind is focused in this dimension, we constantly are co-creating with others in a spaced out framework we call time. This is done for reference and experience for cause and effects teaching. So let's go into the schematic of time in ancient sites. To learn what a vortex is and to learn how this reality was created. All right, so let's get into the description on this page. So they describe it as source energy, which is all that is. It starts with an injection of energy into non-physical points or into non-physical as points of light, riding on a harmonic pulse. The light and harmonics I refer to are not what we would understand in our physical reality. Physical light and sound are products of sensory perception and source energy is not physical in any interpretation. This harmonic pulse expands out in a 360 degree pattern from source injection points as it enters its new reality. Energy flows in and out through these points as it expands in an unresisted sweep of the 360 isotropic range, only to flow back into its source point. Now, when we were discussing holograms, this is what I was talking about as far as the uh, all that is or the oneness and it passing through the electrostatic waves or, or of the brain energy passing to and from the one back into this reality feeding this re feeding this reality this is what i was talking about and so energy flows in and out through these points as it expands in an unresisted sweep of 360 degree isotropic range only to flow back into its source point as a 360 degree wave of energy or harmonic thrush thrust reaches boundaries of adjacent point expansions as it is deflected back to its source. Now, it shows an example. Uh, I'll definitely try to make cover art or put this up in some type of way. So, the initial injection results in a wave or harmonic movement that creates a spherical wave field. The harmonic spheres continue outward, reaching their limits at the edge of adjacent spheres, creating walls. It is at this point that motion outward is in 
impede or is impeded and a new reflected inward movement is created. This movement creates a different vibrational level and thus a new flavor of the original flow. As seen below, okay, boundaries or walls are created as spheres will compact to fill an available space. What it looks like is eight square eight squares with circles or spheres inside of them and so this expansion results in boundaries that are mixtures of each participating spheres in individual vibration the result of this mixture is the creation of a new structure called the cube this cube shape is more than an abstract static shape as it is composed of fields composed of fields moving energy which creates a lattice structure of common frequency Below is an actual electron image of a Stronian atom showing the injection points and a cube shape. And so it shows that it looks exactly like the picture above, just more spheres of energy. All right, so going further, all the structural elements from the initial portholes to the most complex aspects have flowing energy. This flow is possible because it is instigated by need to find balance or neutrality. Unbalanced energy flows back to its source, all to find balance. Likewise, energy is flown or seen flowing out. The two opposite flows of inward and outward energy creates an equal balanced flow along their paths. As each porthole injects outward, it too receives inward energy. The opposite directions of flow support themselves by wrapping around each other, creating a harmonic, multi-directional balance. This wrapping or twisting around each other creates a helix shape, as seen in the photos below. Uh, and it does show galaxies in a helix shape, showing cross currents of energy wrapping around one another. The opposite directions of flow support themselves by wrapping around each other, creating a harmonic directional balance. No. The two photos on the left are Hans J harmonics with the top one showing a helix from one side and the photo below showing the lines to the end. They're pairs working together in a rotational clock and counterclock spiral. The photo to the right is an actual celestial photo showing the helix formation. In the photo, one can see the opposite flowing creation or creating rotating helix pairs of energies. Each pair as an individual is called a string. This helix flow is one of the most basic harmonic structures that Hans Jenny has recorded. And it also shows Lycodium powder can be seen vibrating into a helix in a Jennings photo. Goes on to say, and two top celestial photos above are examples of the spiraling energy. The author says, my teaching sources call these flow st flows strings. Advanced formations of the strings are called ribbons. These are composites of many stacked strings, which are, once again, uh, examples of spiraling energy. Energy flowing back and forth, which wraps around itself to create what is called a string. Stacked up strings are called ribbons. Just for the dialogue in this read. So the photo diagram above this shows the opposite must flow through the ribbon structure and in opposite directions for permanent duration or balance. They do not cross one another in this balanced flow for this will create interference in a different structure, rendering the end of the ribbon. As the lines of energy come full circle back to its source in a crowded universal field of lines, they eventually do cross each other of their vibration. The crossing a path creates a new harmonic pattern called the cube. Six-way field boundary planes called cubes. Accumulations of energy lines flowing from source creates ribbons that continue to build onto themselves in even wider unrestricted widths. That is until they reach the boundaries of other ribbons. It is only here and with common vibrational levels that contact can interact or create interference with one another. And in any other strand that is not the same vibration will be outside the other's reality or resonances and no interference will be created. As shown in the diagram above, the widening lines eventually cross one another, creating a cube. And it does show, a, once again, a six wave field boundary plane called cube. And it will have its own specific vibratory rate. These cube structures become balances or balanced states of energy of their own and thus are permanent part of the universal structure. 
its composition is still from primal source energy of injected energy. And because of this source, or sorry, because of this source, it is a balanced static structure. Each cube will have its own specific energy signature as it is a combination of the individual ribbon's energy. What I mean by my prior description of balanced static structure is entirely dependent on our perception of time and space. The primal level of creation is measured in billions of Earth years. This does not mean that its time frame has anything to do with our perception or our measures of time. It is all about levels of perception, as each level of vibration, regardless of its conscious awareness, will have a different perception of time. In other words, there is no one time frame in the universe as each individual reality will create its own. Our concept of time existence is simple, our perception, and has little to nothing to do with the rest of the universe. So we can understand the cube grid as permanent, but that is only because we are judging it by our standards of time. In Jenny's laboratory, the confines of a container only allowed a slice of what is actually a three-dimensional structure. Future science will need to study this in a three-dimensional format. In Jenny's photos, below you can see energy injection. It does look like a lot of structure showing a sphere inside of a cube. The lines of attraction join the points of energy as it flows back and forth in opposite directions. Sections A in the photo is magnified in view of the injection point, complete with attached ribbon lines. In section B, he's drawn the, or they have drawn the red lines to show the vertical flow direction of the slice. The third dimensional cube, or the Gini harmonic. The three dimensional flow of this structure is a cube, but as seen as a two dimensional slice, it could be called a grid. In the diagram to the bottom right, I show how this would look in a three-dimensional view. And once again, it does look like a cube with a sphere within it. A cube can be described as wave fields of space. A cube can be described as a wave field of space. Wave fields that are products of ribbons of flowing energy, which must eventually cross each other on their journeys. As these ribbons cross paths, they create secondary formations from their arching energy. The energy needs to continue its course, but interference deflects some of the energy into a new structural level called a sphere. It is within this breaking away from the static grid cube that creates a vibrational bed for self-awareness consciousness to enter. Cutting a lot of corners, it is within the sphere that our level of consciousness is allowed in. This injection into the structure takes place in the center of each sphere, each structure and cube and sphere. <laughs>